Okay, welcome to this demo session. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about the file server, how to set that up in Windows. And we will discuss and I will show you some about the role-based access control, uh, the AGDLP strategy that Microsoft uses. Uh, so first off, we need some new machines. I have pre-created two. One Windows Server uh, 2012 R2 core, uh, that will be our file server. And then we have a Windows client, which we will use to try to test the, the settings and the access uh, control. We will join both of these into the domain to make this work as we want to. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is get the password for these machines. Uh, some of you have had problems with the RC file uh, that you use to be able to access your um, the command line uh, interface for OpenStack. But usually it, uh, it depends that you haven't run the file in the correct manner. Uh, so you, in Windows, you need to use git bash, uh, and in Linux or OS X, you can use the, the regular uh, terminal. Uh, and as I stated, you use the dot. You could use source, that's the same. So source and then the path to that file. I think mine is in the download directory. Then you add the password. And hopefully now you can run uh, OpenStack commands. Yes. Um, and to get the password for a machine, you use your key file and then the name of the machine. Uh, we have FS01. I won't show you this. And I will get that for my client also. So that's good. And to be able to connect to these, these are not, they don't have any public IP address. So I will use my Grandmaster Win to configure these machines. Uh, and to connect to that machine, I will use a remote desktop. So this is the same setup that I had used uh, the last demo. And we use the domain user, the domain user administrator, and log in. I will uh, remove my picture because I saw in the last demo that you didn't see some of the, the parts of the, the windows uh, where I make some choices. So you will not see me for now. Uh, So now this machine is a server that is joined into the domain. Uh, it's not a domain controller. It's just a regular server. Uh, let's see if I could get this open. Yeah, good. So if I wanted to connect to another server, I will use 
RDP on this machine. So remote desktop. And then the IP for that machine, which was start with the file server was fifty nine. And then we had the admin account that was pre-created when the machine was created. And then the password, which I just got. Oops, sorry. And here you see the, the certificate. The, the server created this um, when it uh, was created. So you have to acknowledge that this is self-signed certificate. So the first thing that we should do is set a password for the administrator account because they are blank by default. So we do that with net user administrator and then a star. This is just a security measure. We could uh, inactivate that account or do something else with it, but for now we just set a, a password to it. Uh, so we want this to be a file server, and we want to be able to use groups uh, on our in, within our domain to grant access to the files and folders on the file server. So to be able to do that, we need to join this server to the domain so that it will be authenticated through the domain. And to do that, uh, we need this machine to be able to find the domain, the Active Directory domain. Uh, if we check its IP settings, sorry, we can see that it has uh, name servers uh, that are here at LNU um, that it got from OpenStack uh, DHCP server that we set up uh, earlier. And these name server won't know the Active Directory domain that we have created. This is just an internal domain. So we need to change these name servers to the domain controller IP because that uh, has a uh, DNS server installed. It did that when you uh, promoted it to a uh, domain controller. So we can use sconfig to change the IP for the name servers. The eight, um, which interface. And what we want to do, we want to set the name servers, DNS servers. And the preferred one should be 10, 0, 10, no, 20. Let's see. My domain controller has this IP. So it should be the uh, domain controller that you have, 20.55. Um, when we've done that, now this machine will be able to find uh, the domain. So now we can use sconfig to join the domain. We do that with the option one. And we want it to join a domain, so that's D, and the name of the domain. You could type the whole uh, FQDN or just the, the name of the do domain. And then we need an account on the domain uh, which has the permissions to add computer and uh, in our case this is the administrator account. Hmm, what password did I use? Uh, 
This is the same command which you use to change the computer name. So the next thing we will be asked if you want to change the computer name. But first, let's try to join the domain. Do you want to change the computer name before restarting the computer? No. You must restart. OK. Then my RDP session, the remote desktop, will, will end. Uh, so I'm back to the Grandmaster Win, uh, which is my configuration machine. And we wait a while to, uh, so that the server can reboot. So we can change this to the admin account. For the domain, and as you see now, we have a FQDN uh, for this server, the fu fully qualified domain name. And now I'm authenticated with a domain administrator. Uh, so the next thing. Uh, to do uh, is to add the file services uh, feature and you do this in PowerShell is the easiest way so we start PowerShell and run the command install dash windows feature file services That would be the same thing as if we had a graphical interface like we have on this server. You will do manage, add roles and features. Then we have file services. It's this one. So we we'll go back. You don't need to restart the server to, uh, to make this uh, work. Uh, it's quite hard to uh, administer the settings and creating files and folders with the CLI. Of course, if you use a script, that would be great. But if we wanted to use our uh, Grandmaster Win machine to administer the file server to create the folders graphically, we can do that. But we need to enable some firewall rules so that that traffic can uh, be accepted. And which are these rules? Well, I have on our, uh, okay, let's see, I need to do it like that. On our demo page. So the net sh command we've been using before. So we use this to control the advanced firewall. And we want to set a rule group. So they have pre-configured some rule groups to make it easier for us. So we want to enable these, some of these, actually. And the first one here is so that we can remotely administer the uh, firewall. So then we can use the graphical interface on another machine to administer the firewall. Uh, it will give us a greater uh, overview of the firewall and which rules are uh, enabled. So that could be a good. You don't have to enable this to, um, uh, to, make, to make changes to the, the, the file server. Then we should enable remote volume management. That will make, uh, make it possible to us to, oh, sorry. Uh, to configure disks and partitions on uh, the remote uh, server. And then we have the file and printer sharing. So this make it uh, make us available. This will be probably enabled when we install the, the file server uh, services. By default, it does that. Uh, then we have remote service management. Make it easier for us to control the server. And this is just the duplicate. We don't need that again. And if we want to view the logs on another machine, we should enable this. 
This doesn't enable any services, just the traffic through the firewall. Uh, let's see, I think my RDP session died. Oh, there it is. So now I'm on my file server and we can run these. And it just stated that it updated these rules. So from now on, we can control this, the file server from another machine. Of course, you need to use an account, an, an administrator account that has local access to that server. When you join a, a server or a client to a domain, uh, they will add the administrator group of the domain to all of the local administrator group accounts. We can watch that later on. So let's just try this. Uh, Microsoft has uh, something called an MMC, which you can run to administer uh, different parts of the server. And this is just a console uh, which helps you administer different tasks. You can load different snap-ins, and here we have a lot of different snap systems, and which are here depends on what services you have installed on the server. You can run this on Windows uh, clients, like Windows 10 or Windows uh, 7. Uh, but the list will be quite smaller because you don't have the, the binaries to administer those services. But we could see the firewall, for example. You add that, and then you can choose which computer you want to administer. By default, it's the local computer, but you can choose another one. And here you can see the benefits of having a domain because now I'm authorized to administer all the servers that have been joined to this domain. Uh, so we can just type in the name MW. If you don't type it complete, you can make check names and it will look in the Active Directory domain uh, which uh, servers and clients we have joined. And here we have the file uh, server. So hopefully now I can see the inbound and the outbound rule of this server. And I can enable and disable different rules. And this makes it much more easier for us to have an overview than, we, than that we have with SSH command. Uh, so you see they have some predefined rules uh, which aren't enabled. You see that by the disabled look of the icon. icon. Uh, but this was just to show you how to manage this. If you wanted to uh, manage shares, we have a snap in for that, shared folders. Uh, and we connect that also to the same. Um, so now you see that I have two different snap pins loaded. And you can create a lot of different snap pins here. And if you want to save this console, if I close it down now and open MMC again, it will be empty. But I could save this and call this file server 01 or something like that. So when I close this down, I have this that I can double click and I get the same back. So you can have this for different servers so we make it easier uh, for you to manage them. Here we have the shares on, not on this machine, but on the file server machine. Uh, and as you see, they have some defaults, which are uh, added by default when you add the, the role file services. You have the, the root uh, hard disk, the C colon, it has been shared. And of course, even though it's shared, uh, people who are not authenticated and authorized to access that disk it won't be able to make any changes on it, of course. It will use the NTFS permissions that you have set up. 
You see they have a little dollar sign after the name. If you have share something and added a dollar sign uh, after that, um, they will be shared, but they won't be, if I try to browse the file server, you can do this by uh, running backslash backslash and then the server name. You see that it is empty, but these are still shares. So if I just add the part uh, C dollar, oh, I need C. I will get that directory. So now I am on the file server's uh, C colon, as you can see here. And I'm able to access this because I'm an administrator of the domain. If we look, I think that we can do this. We can open up another snap in called da, 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 users and groups. Local users and groups on the file server. So we have joined the file server to the domain, but it still has local users, which you can log on with. Uh, and here you see the admin account and the administrator account. They also have some groups. And the, the users that are in the administrator's group will be able to control everything on that particular server, the local server. All Windows machine has an administrator's group. And this is the group that you are added to when you want to be administrator for the machine. And as you can see here, the local administrator account is of course in this group. We also have the admin uh, account, but we have these, the media work domain admins. And this is a domain group, which we have in the domain. That's why we see the, the domain name first here. So all people or people that are in groups that are in this group will be able to locally administer that server. That is why I can browse this folder and be able to create and edit things. Because if we create the folder in here, and then look at the permissions for this folder. We can see that it has some default permissions, easier to see in this. <coughs> and it has been added, this is local accounts, since we state the, the local uh, machine name first, administrator. So you, you don't see anything about the domain here, but still me as a domain administrator can make changes here. And that's because I'm in a group domain admins that are in this group. And this is done without you knowing anything. This is done when you join the domain by the computer. This is the default behavior that it's supposed to do. Um, so on, if we wanted to share, create a couple of shares in this folder, uh, we should first look at the permissions that are set by default, because it will inherit the, the, the parent folder's permissions. And maybe we don't want the local users uh, to be able to read and execute files in this folder, or the, the subfolders. So I will disable the inheritance, and then you get the question that I asked, uh, that I showed you, talked about before. If you want to remove all inherit permissions, or just uh, convert this so they have been explicit permissions. They don't inherit any new updates from the parent folder. And now I can remove uh, the lo local user so they don't have access. You should have the system account still have full control. That is being used when you make backups and, and stuff like that. 
And the, lo the administrator should, of course, still be there so they can make changes to this folder. Uh, the creative owner is also something that should be have full control. So that if you have access to actually create something in this folder, you should also be have access to make have full control on that specific file or folder. So, as you see here, I talked about this in, in the uh, permissions uh, part of the lecture. The creative owner, you don't see, it looks like it doesn't have any permission at all. But you have this little special sign. If we look at his permission, he actually has all full control permission. So why doesn't it show? Well, that's because it only applies to subfolders and files. It's not uh, this folder or every folder behind, below it. So it can't see that this is a little bit special. That's why you can't state it. So even though it doesn't says allow on read and execute and modify, the user can still have that. You have to check the special permissions. But the other ones have full control. OK. So. I have created, and you saw me run a script in the last demo when we talked a bit about Active Directory that created a lot of users and groups. If I open up Active Directory users and computers, uh, you can see I have a quite massive amount of users. Uh, again, it's important to realize that I'm now administer in my domain controller, even though I'm on the Grandmaster Win machine. Uh, and it does that by, by default. It looks, OK, you are in this domain, and you are a domain administrator, then you have access to make changes here. So then you will be able to, to see this. Uh, my script also created a lot of global groups. Let's see, for sales, the sales department has a lot of different groups that people are in. So you can see uh, has at least one member. Uh, and it's also created domain local groups. And these should be uh, used to give access throughout the system. I haven't created any uh, shares or something that has uh, to do with, with accountant yet. Uh, but you should be it like if you're in this group, then you should there should probably be a, a, a share called accountant. And if I'm in the in this group, I should have modify permissions. So let's try and create that for with, let's say sales. We have three different uh, permission groups for sales: full control, modify, and read. So in our shares folder, this folder isn't shared yet. This is just a, the, a folder that's on C code. If you go to the actual file server and look at, try to change the directory to C colon uh, shares, you see that is created locally on that machine. Uh, of course, if you have a file server, you probably would have had a couple of other disks added to the or volumes added. Uh, you shouldn't have the shares on the C colon, the, the system drive, of course. Uh, so, so, uh, we have some, we didn't get the, the volumes uh, working before this demo, but Stefan is looking at that. So you should, in your. In OpenStack, we can create volumes. Uh, but as you see, I've, I've created one that I'm trying to add to uh, a file server, but it's still 
won't be added. So that will be added as a separate uh, hard disk to the, the, the machine. So if we don't get that working, you will probably just create that on, on C colon. But that's, of course, not how you should do it. OK, back to the demo. So usually in the, the shares, we have a subfolder maybe for the different departments. And here we have sales, let's say. Uh, and if we look at the permission for this folder, it will inherit uh, the folder. So here we should add the different domain local groups that we have pre-created. If we don't have this, we should create a domain, some domain local groups for this share. I probably would name this not DL Media Work Sales. I would probably name them DL uh, MW-FS01, because that's the actual file server. And then the, the share. The, we will share this folder uh, with this name, uh, sales. Uh, as you saw here, we don't get the tab for sharing. And that's because I'm on a share. So you won't get that. If I open up a local folder, um, that's on the uh, Grandmaster Win machine. Uh, let's just create one here. Oops, sorry for the misspell. But here I will have another tab that is sharing. So how do we share the folder on a remote server? Well, we added this snap-in which can help us. You can, of course, all this, this, you can run commands to do, different commands. Uh, we have shares, and if we wanted to create a new one, we use the new share. It will ask me which folder. And as you see, this is one of the main uh, points uh, why it has this default shares. Uh, if you add a new hard disk, it will share that also, but all the administrators will be able to, uh, to see it. Uh, and then we should select the folder. And as you see, translate that to C colon. But if I run this on my machine, the C colon shares would be a different one. Um, but this is on this server. Then it's asked me what I want this to be named. and how it should handle offline settings. I won't go through what that means um, in this course. And then they ask, OK, how should we set up the, the permissions? I usually go with customized permission so that I could add this my own. And here we say we have two tabs, security tab. And this is the same as I got uh, if I'm on that, yeah, this one. This is the same. So this is the NTFS permissions. So here we should add these domain local groups, these three. So let's add those and give them the correct permissions. Uh, DL, oops, sorry. DL media work cells, we can just type DL and then it will state all of the groups that have start with DL. And we can add multiple at once by selecting the first one and then holding down uh, control uh, or shift. And then we apply the appropriate permission. So this was, some, was read, then we should have you shouldn't just have read, because then you can't traverse the folder. You can't go into the folder. You can't run a file. So when we see, say read in Windows, we usually mean read and execute. And that is why I also, on the modify, 
don't just say right, because I could give them just right, but then they only will be able to create new things. You won't be able to modify existing ones. So you should have modify on that domain local group. And of course, the full control should have full control. Um, and you see that it's been added to this. You also have the share permission. And of now, uh, as of now, if I would have shared this, no one will be able to do anything more than read, even if they have NTFS permissions to modify for full control. So for everyone, I would add change. This doesn't mean that everyone can change anything in the folders, because the NTFS permissions will also be added to that. Uh, we shouldn't add full control, because then everyone would be able to change settings for the share. But we should perhaps add the administrator so they have full control. Oops. So. Of course, if no one is in this group, we don't have anyone in this, no one will have full control. So just because you have added those groups, it doesn't mean that they actually will have the, uh, someone will get the permission. You need to be added to this group. That's the role-based authentication, uh, access control. OK, so how do we try this out? Well, I think that we should uh, add the client and try to log on with the user and see if he can ask. So I will open up a new RDP session to let's see what the client was. <coughs> the client is 60. And this is a newly created machine, so it just has the admin account. Uh, not, it's not joined to the domain. Uh, I've gotten the password before, before we started. So admin and the password. Even though it states media work domain here, uh, it if because it's not joined yet, it will try to with a local user account. Good. OK, so to add this, we need to do two things. Again, make it so that this machine can find domain. And you can change the network, uh, the uh, name servers, in IPv4, and set it to the domain controller. So we probably in our, oh, sorry, uh, 2055. For the, our local network, when we set up the DHCP server on uh, OpenStack, we probably would add the IP address for the domain controller. So we don't, so they can get the right name servers by default. So now it, Hopefully, we'll be able to join the domain. So to join the domain graphically, we open up the uh, change computer names, which you do under the system, and change this to the domain. And again, this is. Uh, the domain administrator, not the local administrator. He, he won't be able to 
connect this machine to the domain. So, we have to restart this machine, and then we lose the remote desktop connection, of course. Okay, I want to log on now with a user account, a person that's working in sales. Uh, so, we have users. Uh, I don't know the password for these, so the easiest way is just to reset them. For trying out. We could check this user. Uh, he is part of the all sales and uh, sales representatives. So he's uh, not a uh, manager, so probably he will only be able to read uh, this folder. Okay, let's try to connect with David C's account. And we will probably get an error. And this is because <coughs> remote desktop, uh, the service is uh, already running on all of our machines. We have pre-enabled uh, them uh, in the images. But you have to be a part of a group to be able to access that. So we can use. Uh, the role-based uh, uh, authentication uh, system here also. This is, you have to be a part of a group that is on the local machine. Uh, we can look at that. We log on with the administrator account again. While we are being logged in, we can create a, a group which we want to, all the people that are in this group will be able to log on to uh, use remote desktop on the clients. So we can use the ADDLP strategy here. So we create a group for remote login. Uh, allow, let's say. And then we should add a member. We could add some global group. Let's see. We can say that all sales. David was a part of that group. All sales should have this access. So then we need to set this permission on the machine. 
And since I stated that it's a, a local group, we can open the MMC and add the snap-in local groups on for this client. And as you see, we have a group that's been created here. That is done when you enable the remote desktop service. And by default, there's no one here. The administrator always have access to the remote desktop, but otherwise you have to be a part of this group. And then we can use the domain group, which we just created. Uh, remote something. I created one before when I was trying out this demo. Uh, I think it was this one I created just now. Okay. So people that are in this group will now be able to log on to this machine. So we should probably use, um, you, could, you could use group policy to set that all of our client computers, which we can with group policy edit these groups and add that uh, group uh, to the remote desktop so that we can control which one should be able to log on locally um, via remote desktop. Okay, let's try it out. Log off. And we open up a new remote desktop. Connection and change the user again. David C. And hopefully now he will be able to connect. Yes. <coughs> And as you realize, if we have a big uh, company with a lot of different departments and a lot of different shares and uh, uh, services and different permissions that need to be set, up, we need to use scripts because it will be quite hard, <laughs> tiresome to create all these uh, department folders and, and the domain local groups. Uh, so I think we will have one more demo when I show you a little bit about scripting in Windows, how to start out anyway. Uh, so how do we access the share? Well, as we did on the, uh, the other machine, you can create this run command. This is, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm using shortcuts all the time. Uh, it's in my head. Uh, but you can type them here also. Uh, but otherwise it's Windows R for run. So backslash backslash the server name. And if we just type up, we see that we see the share, sales. If I try to create something in here, I probably don't have permission. And that's based on which group that that user is in. If we look at this user, he is in sales representatives and all sales. And if we look at the domain local group, which handled that share, in modify, we only have the different managers for sales. And in read, we will have all sales. And since he's a part of all sales, then he will be able to access that. Another user in accounting won't be able to look in that folder. But let's say now that David get a promotion and he's a manager. The only thing that we need to do now is add him to that specific row or the group. So if we add him to one of the manager groups, uh, I think we had one for European sales managers. That's it. All the different 
part of the system which this group had now had been access uh, permission to, he will be able to access. So now you probably think that he will be able to create something here. But no. And why is that? Yes, I need to log off. And that's, I talked about that uh, in a previous lecture. That's because all the groups which a user is a part of, he will only get when he logs in. Then he will get the, the, the ticket, granted ticket, and all the groups that he's a part of. Uh, so if you just log off and log in again, he now will be able to access that and create documents. Uh, you can do a lot. Uh, we haven't talked about group policy a lot, but what you probably would do is when a user logs on, he will get the different folders that he is, uh, has permissions to, um, to be uh, connected by automatically. So they will be added to his uh, desktop or uh, within his network drives. Uh, well, that's it for this demo. Uh, any questions? Good. Um, I will probably have one more demo. If you ha have something that you would like me to show you, please um, state that in Slack. Otherwise, I'll probably just talk about script uh, a bit, how to make uh, create scripts and make it easier to create this structure in Active Directory and the different groups. OK, thank you.